In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the background in Photoshop. We're going to start by learning how to select and mask a subject. You'll learn how to match scale and perspective by matching horizon lines. Then we're going to move on to matching the color of our subject to the background and create a cohesive image. And lastly, we're going to learn how to create a realistic depth of field effect. So if you're ready to follow along with this tutorial, make sure to download the project files from the links in the description below. And let's get started. All right, so I already imported the background image that we're going to be using in today's example. And I also have my subject image on another layer, which we're going to start by removing its background. So the easiest way to remove the background of this image is to use Photoshop's select subject feature. So we're going to start by selecting the subject and then go to select subject. And if you have the latest version of Photoshop, you will see that the select subject feature is now much more robust and it can make very accurate selections automatically. To see your selection a little bit better, you can click on Q to access the quick mask mode. And as you can see, most of the subject is selected. Now we can click on Q again and we're going to enter the select and mask panel so we can further modify this selection. And to do that, you're going to need to select any selection tool you'll see the select and mask button at the top. Click on it to enter the select and mask panel. Your view may be different than this and you can change it by clicking here and changing the view mode. So in this case, it's on layers, but you can change the view to black and white to see the mask. You can change it on white and you can also use the opacity slider to control the visibility of the background. So I'm gonna switch the view to all black and if I increase the opacity, you will see that the subject has some halo effects on the edges and we're going to need to fix that. So the first thing you can try is to switch the refine mode to color aware or object aware. And this is going to be depending on your image. So we're going to try one of these modes and see if it improves your layer mask. So in this case, we're going to keep this to object aware. The next thing that I want to do is to shift the edge a little bit inside. So if my if I use the shift edge slider and move it to the left side, you will see that the layer mask is contracting inside. Therefore, it's removing that fringing. But in this case, we have a complicated selection of the hair. So if I move this slider too much, I'm going to lose the details in the hair. So we're going to keep the value of this to about minus 7%. And I'm going to show you a different way to fixing the edge fringes. Okay, so the other thing that you can try is to use the decontaminate color checkbox. And if I check this one, you will see that it's fixing the edge halos here, but it's not working that much on the hair. This might work better if you have a white background, but our background image is a little bit dark and we're going to need to try it a different way. And you can always switch the view to on layers and see how your layer mask is working with the background. So you don't have to do a lot of unnecessary work. So in this case, the hair edges are not looking all that bad. We can also use the refined edge tool here on the top left corner and use the brush tool to paint on the hair and improve the edges a little bit. All right, so in this case, this selection is good enough. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna change the output mode to a new layer with layer mask so it can still work non-destructively. So click on OK. And now let's fix that color fringing at the edges. So with my layer mask selected, I'm going to take my lasso tool. And as you can see, we have some halo edges here on the left side. And there's also here at the bottom a little bit. So I'm going to select that area using the lasso tool. Now I'm going to hold on shift to add to the selection. And I'm going to also select this area. Now we can go to filter. We're going to go to other, then choose minimum. I'm going to keep the radius up to one pixel in this case. And as you can see, that edge fringe is now totally removed. And the minimum filter will contract the mask inside, therefore remove this edge fringe. So we're going to click on OK. I'm going to click on Control D to deselect. And now our selection is looking pretty good. All right, so now that the subject is masked out, Let's move on to the next step and it's matching the perspective of the subject with the background. 
one of the most important things to creating realistic composites is matching the perspective. And to make the scale of this subject look realistic and belongs to the background, we're gonna need to match something called a horizon line. And if you don't know what a horizon line is, make sure to watch my perspective video where I show you in detail how to match perspective and vanishing points. So make sure to watch that video. And basically a horizon line is where the sky and the ground meet together. So if I hold shift and click on the layer mask of this image, you will see that the horizon line of this image is right about here. You can also use uh, something like the line tool and follow the leading lines and that will also give you your vanishing point which will also be where the horizon line is. Again, as I always say in my tutorials, you don't have to create a very accurate uh, vanishing point to match the perspective. All you need to do is to have a close enough assumption of where the horizon line is and your image will still look realistic. So in this case, our horizon line is going to be right about here. Let's turn off this layer uh, for a moment. And now the horizon line of our background is going to be right about here. So now all we need to do is to align these two horizon lines together and we'll get an accurate perspective. So let's do that right now. So I'm gonna take my line tool here and draw a small line of the horizon line of the subject for our reference. I'm gonna also enable this stroke and increase its size. Okay, so now that we know where the horizon line is, we can turn back the layer mask on. Then I'm gonna select both these layers. I'm gonna click on Control H again to see the horizon line of our background, which is here. And now all we, all we need to do is to drag both of these layers down and match them together. Now we can click on Control H again and I'm gonna also hide this line layer. So now as you can see, just by doing this, the scale of the subject is now looking much better. Now we can select our subject. We can also hold shift to keep our subject moving horizontally. And I'm gonna move it to the center. We can also scale our subject based on that horizon line. So what we can do is click on Control H again to turn back our guides. Then click on Ctrl T to bring on the free transform. And what you need to do is to move this anchor point and align it with the horizon line. And if you hold Alt or Option when you're scaling, you will see that the subject is scaling based on that point. And now if we scale our subject, it will scale in perspective. So I'm going to resize it down to about this size. And I'm going to click here to accept the changes. Okay, so now that we have our perspective matching, let's move on to matching the color with the background. So to match the color of the subject to the background, we're going to be using a curves adjustment layer. And if you are new to curves and feeling a little overwhelmed, you can watch my color matching tutorial where I show you how to use the automatic color adjustment algorithm of curves. And I also talk in depth about matching color using adjustment layers and check layers. So what we need to do now is to select the subject layer, then create a curves adjustment layer at the top. We also want this adjustment layer to only affect the subject. So we're going to right click and create a clipping mask. Now we can make any adjustment here and it will only affect the subject. So our background image has faded blacks and it also had a warm red tone to it. So we need to replicate that on our subject. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fade the blacks and I can do that by moving the bottom graph point of the curves adjustment layer to the top a little bit. We can also focus only on the luminosity by adding another black and white adjustment layer at the top and then changing its blending mode to color. So now this adjustment layer will only affect the color. Now we can adjust the black values and try to match it with the background. So that looks good. Uh, I also don't want this to affect the midtones. So I'm going to go here to the middle and I'm going to drag the midtones a little bit to the bottom. I also want my highlights to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to also drag this point to the top to increase the highlights. So this is before and after. 
So now we have the luminosity matching. What we need to do now is to match the colors. And I'm going to start by going to the blue channel. And I'm going to add some blues to the shadows. I'm going to also switch to the red channel. And I'm going to add some reds to the shadows as well. Okay, if you see it affecting the skin tones, you can reduce it from the highlights. Now, the last thing I want to do is to reduce the greens from the subject. And by reducing the greens, I can see that I added too much red. So I'm going to quickly go back to the red channel and reduce the reds just a little bit. Okay, so this is before and after matching the color. So as you can see, now the color of the subject is looking much better and it's matching with the background. But the other thing that it's bothering me a little bit is the fringing here on the hair. So let me show you how to fix that really quickly. I'm going to create another layer at the top. And I'm going to also create a clipping mask for this layer. Then what we need to do is to change the blending mode of this layer to multiply. And we're going to use the brush tool and paint on the white areas that has fringes. So use the Alt or Option to sample a color from the hair. And also you need to paint with a low flow and opacity. Now we can sample a color from the hair and we just need to paint on the top here to remove that fringing. And as you can see, this will make those fringing areas darker. So you can obviously spend more time when you're working on your image and you can also use the clone stamp tool to remove fringing on the hair as well. So with that done, that's pretty much what we need to do to match the subject. The last thing that I want to do is to add some depth of field effect to separate the subject a little bit from the background. So I'm going to select my background image and I'm going to right click and convert this layer to a smart object. Next, I'm going to go to Filter, then Filter Gallery, and I'm going to choose Tilt Shift. If you don't see the control points, you can click on Control H to show or hide them. So basically, you can use the scroll wheel to increase the amount of blur. You can also move the blur area by clicking and dragging to move this line. And basically, everything is inside these two lines will be in focus, and everything in between will gradually start having blur. And you can use this line to control the transition of the blur. So in this case, we want the bottom area to be in focus. So I'm going to move this line all the way to the bottom. And to move the focus area overall, you can click here and drag it to the bottom. So we want the blur to start at the bottom and gradually fades in the background. So in this case, it's going to be about 14 pixels. That looks good to me. Now I'm going to click on OK. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, we were able to get a realistic result. And that's by breaking each step individually and doing it the right way. So we started by selecting and masking the subject properly. Then we fixed and matched the perspective. After that, we matched the luminosity and the color of the subject with the background. And lastly, we applied a depth of field effect to add a little bit of separation of the subject with the background and make the image cohesive overall. Again, make sure to watch the videos in the description if you want to learn more about matching perspective and color in depth. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. And also turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on upcoming videos like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next tutorial.